Section 51 of Through Fairy Halls of My Book House. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Through Fairy Halls of My Book House. Edited by Olive Beaupre Miller. The Man Who Loved High Kwai. An Indian Tale of Mount Tacoma where the pines loom dark against the sky beneath the glistening snow peak of the great white mount tacoma there dwelt once a hunter in the fragrant pine woods he followed the game he fished in the rivers and in the placid lake where tacoma stands upside down in the water but more than all else he loved high kwai glittering strings of shells shell money treasure 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 there came a time when he thought of nothing but high kwai he would steal the lip jewels of women he would snatch little strings from the children's necks and he longed to learn of some magic by which he could heap up still more of the treasure and then the evil one came and dwelt in his heart and whispered to him always high kwai more high kwai one day the hunter stood on the shore of the lake dreaming of shell money when there came to him out of the forest moose moose the great elk his tamanawis who watched over him you want high kwai said moose moose hearken i know where you will find it find it in great heaps more than any red man has in all your lodges the hunter listened eagerly go to the very top of the mountain said moose moose amid the snow on its peak you will find a valley cleft out of the rocks and there lies a lake of black black water on the shores of this lake rise three giant rocks one is like a salmon one like the kamas root and one like me an elk beneath the elk's head dig there you will find high kwai great shining strings of high kwai and when you have it Show your thanks to the great spirit and to me by placing one string on each of the rocks. I will be rich. Men shall call me great chief, cried the hunter, and he bade farewell to the elk and went back to his lodge. I go away on a long hunt, he said to his squaw. Then he seized his elkhorn pick and set forth. Through the dense forests he climbed, by the side of rushing mountain brooks, over flowery upland meadows among mighty rocks where the snow began past gnarled and twisted trees that grew on the edge of the timber and so on up into the everlasting snows then darkness overtook him it was bitter cold he rolled himself in his blanket and lay down to sleep in his sleep he dreamed he had strings and strings of high kwai hanging about his neck tighter they grew and tighter tighter and tighter ah they were choking him with a wild cry he awoke it was only a dream and still he wanted high kwai before the sun he was up and on his way once more just as dawn glowed rosy over the snow he reached the mountain top there before him as moose moose had said was the lake of black water and rising from it the great rocks of the salmon the kamas root and the elk seizing his pick he began at once to dig at the foot of the rock that was shaped like the elk all day long he worked digging eagerly digging and twelve great otters rose up out of the strange dark waters to watch him just as the sun was shining he came upon the treasure great heaps of glittering high kwai his eyes glowed like fire from his lips came weird sounds like the laughter of a loon deep down into the shining shells he dug his hands he slipped the strings over his neck his arms he clutched them tight to his bosom he held them up to the light to catch the last gleam of the setting sun he thought not of moose moose nor of the great spirit to offer thanks he hung no strings on the rocks but clutching them tighter and tighter he started off down the mountain then the otters uttered a strange, sad cry and dove down into the waters, and Tuta the thunder in answer went crashing across the sky. 
The wind began to howl and shriek. Snow came swirling fiercely down, and still the hunter clutched his treasure tight and struggled on and on. The storm increased, the wind roared. Too tall the thunder seemed rending the very heavens. Then the hunter took one single string of shells and cast it grudgingly to the winds. For the great spirit, he said, but as he hugged his treasure the storm burst more furiously on him. The night and the mountain found voices, and on every side they shrieked in his ear, Hi, quai, hi, quai, hi, quai. One by one he cast his precious strings away, and he groaned as he did so, as though he gave up a part of himself. At last they were gone, those shining strands. He flung the last one from him. Then he fell to the ground, exhausted, and his eyelids closed in sleep. When he awoke the sun was shining, and in his heart was a wonderful peace. He found himself at the foot of a tall fir-tree, the same beneath which he had dropped the night before, and above the great white mountain smiled graciously upon him. He was hungry, but as he started to rise he found his limbs were stiff. His clothing was in rags, and from his head hung hair as white as the snow on Tacoma. Astonished, he looked about him. All was the same as it had been the night before, and yet somehow it was different. He dug some roots to eat, and then started slowly down the mountain. He thought now no more of Haikwai. In his ears was the song of birds. In his eyes the golden glow of the sun through the soft smoky haze of Indian summer, and in his heart calmness, utter peace, like the calmness of the mountain, majestic and serene. At length he came to a lodge before which sat a squaw. She was old, and her hair was white. He knew her not and passed her by, yet no. She called him back. Her voice was glad and sweet and low. It was his own wife and his own lodge. Not two short nights, but years and years had passed since he left her. How many moons you have been gone, she cried. I have traded much since you went and made much haikwai. I will give it all to you. Nay, said the old man. Give me a seat by the lodge fire and a welcome. I care not for haikwai. I care only for peace. Then the good squaw was astonished. Henceforth the old man sat at his lodge door, pondered much, and gave friendly greeting to all who passed him by. To those in need he gave high quai, to those in trouble he gave good counsel, and to old and young who sought his advice, his answer was always skokum, good. So he was much beloved and there dwelt evermore undisturbed in his heart the wisdom, peace, and quiet that he learned from the great white Tacoma. End of section 51 Recording by J.J. J. Wasman